Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox. In this video I plan to explore one type of shuttle derived launch vehicle. There are many possibilities for this. Of course SLS, the space launch system, is one type, but I'm going for a sort of closer version with three SSMEs and four segment boosters, so more directly related to the shuttle. Um, in response to my previous shuttle related video, adapted shuttle video with the F1 booster, uh, the booster pack with three F1 engines. There were a few comments that I will broach. Uh, first of all, uh, testing it out with uh, S1C stage with five F1 engines. I'll do that in a different video. All we really need to test is the payload capacity on that. I'm not really hot on the idea when we can do it with three F1 boosters, uh, three one F1 engines. That seems cheaper and probably safer and the shuttle bay really couldn't contain too much heavier uh, payload anyway so I think it'd be okay to just confine it to that and um, there are a few other comments but I think we'll uh, talk about those along the way as far as this idea is concerned well uh, there are a few shuttle derived uh, lifter concepts actually a lot there are actually a lot. In fact, uh, during the 1970s, while they were developing the shuttle program, they came up with every possible idea that you could come up with related to a shuttle that lands on a runway, basically. Uh, anything that you want to put on the other side of that, liquid boosters, uh, a, a booster plane instead of you know this whole arrangement, uh, straight wing uh, shuttle, all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, lots of possibilities, including, of course, uh, Buran and her gear configuration. Rocketdyne, for instance, wanted to develop RS-25s, you know, uh, special main engines that ran on kerosene and oxygen. So they'd have a stage combustion kerosene and oxygen engine that would be used on instead of the SRBs. So you would cluster four of them together, right? Uh, they'd be stage combustion kerosene oxygen engines being used in place of the SRBs, four of them on each side. You would only need two boosters unlike uh, Energy S4 because Energy is actually a heavy launch vehicle that happens to have a shuttle slapped on the side of it because they need money from the military. Um, it didn't really need four boosters. It could have done with two and probably uh, their idea was just to have two. So obviously didn't get any money for that. But every idea eventually came about. Probably the one that you've heard of is Shuttle C. Uh, the difference between Shuttle C and this is that Shuttle C would have a full-size shuttle that came back down and a payload bay and, you know, sort of do it like that. Basically strip out a shuttle and work like that. It'd have a little bit more payload capacity than a regular shuttle, but still not as much as it could have. So we get to this. <laughs> or I, I've varyingly called this the nose or the mouse, uh, but it is a uh, shuttle engine recovery vehicle. And it is just meant, it's got the shuttle engines on the tail here, and it is just meant to come back down through the atmosphere with the shuttle. It's got RCS, uh, basically the forward RCS block of the shuttle, not the OMS pods you'll notice. So there's no fuel cell, there's no OMS, none of that business and it does have parachutes so it doesn't have landing gear we could convert it to a landing gear craft but that requires a vertical stabilizer and possibly better control authority right now it comes back down as a pod basically not as a space plane because it's too heavy uh, right now the, the engines alone are 10 tons this whole thing is 28 tons it's got a little bit of fuel for the RCS and to deorbit but the body itself here is 16 tons, as you can see, and that doesn't include the body flap here and control surfaces in the back. Body flap is mainly meant to keep the engines cool. I had to increase the temperature tolerance for these engines. These come with real engines, and for some reason they only had a 500 Kelvin max temp. So if you're using real engines with realism overhaul, maybe check on the max temp for those because it seemed really low for all of them. So yeah, anyway, so we're basically gonna try and bring the engines back down with this instead of um, dumping them, obviously, and instead of having a shuttle C, which would be a lot more structural mass that is a waste, and you cut down on your payload capacity. Instead, I have designed a makeshift shuttle drive launcher ET adapter 
So <laughs> underneath here is the top of the external tank and I just put a cylinder. Whoop, we need to get it on the node. Uh, cylinder on top of that, uh, except my node does not seem to be in the right place. Uh, there we go. Let's shift it up so it's not clipping. Okay, so then we just use a procedural fairing on top of that to do the rest. And our payload is Skylab. Skylab with the solar panels and the telescope mount and all that business. Um, Skylab weighs in at... Oh, right, the uh, way things are parented. Well, it's about 81 tons, I can tell you. So it's an 81 ton payload, which is greater than the payload of SLS Block 1. So you can hear the pain in my voice. <laughs> uh, why, why, why is it that um, this sort of stack with the three engines, the three space shuttle main engines, and only four segment boosters has an 81 ton um, max payload capacity by, by the look of it. It probably has less than that if you want some buffer. While SLS Block 1 has a 70 ton. Well, SLS Block 1 is carrying another stage on top, right? And the way this is, we need to actually bring the external tank all the way into orbit. And, well, it's... Okay. Um, yeah, so we'll be leaving it into orbit. What are we going to do with it in orbit? Uh, does it decay? Well, um, read Kim Stanley Robinson's Red Mars for that, I guess. Uh, but uh, we could do all sorts of things, or just let it decay and come back down. But anyway, it is going to come all the way up to orbit, whereas the SLS Block 1, it has a small upper stage basically adapted from the Delta IV upper stage, and that it is more optimized for flinging things out to the moon or Mars or something or further out than actually bringing payloads up to LEO. Now if you took off the upper stage of the SLS, you'd probably have uh, at least a comparable payload capacity to this if not more. Uh, but again, it's optimized for moon and Mars, not for getting stuff to LEO, whereas this is optimized for low Earth orbit. Alright, well anyway, the question is how does it work? And the answer is, I don't actually know. Um, I've tried a few times to bring this, I've tweaked it a few times. It, the balance, as you might imagine, is really, really iffy. But I'll talk more about that along the way. Let's just uh, launch this and see what happens. Obviously, the nose, the shuttle engine recovery vehicle, is a part that I made. It's not a very complicated part. I would probably recommend if you're doing this on your own to just use like structural parts, procedural parts, and procedural wings. You probably get a better aerodynamic situation than this is. To save myself some trouble, I have avoided doing the roll program. I hope you don't mind. All right, throttle up. I'll just do it manually. Ignition. I mean, more or less, there's a shuttle right now, right? launch and actually easier to control than the shuttle because the SSMEs have an easier time going through the center of mass when there's a payload on top right instead of having all this mass off to one side most of the mass is right on top of the vehicle so it's easier um, this part incidentally I made to be two tons I don't think that's unreasonable as the external tank altogether is 26 tons. I mean, obviously, the heavier you make that, the more it cuts into the payload capacity of the whole thing. As far as the, the mass of this, I think it's very reasonable considering it, uh, it's basically what you would expect from the back end of the shuttle, which is what it is, plus the OMS system in the front. So fairly fairly solid on the mass of that part of it. There is one problem in that you can see the little struts up here, and the fact that the inner stage, or sorry, inner tank is uh, supposed to bear all of the brunt of the thrust. Well, this doesn't actually extend all the way to that fitting and that inner, inner tank, so some retrofitting will have to be done on the external tank to make this work out. Okay, getting ready for booster separation. And 
and boost the set. So the quirk with this is, if you're going to try and bring it down like a pod, instead of like a space plane, uh, it's not a matter of having the center of mass in front of the center of lift, it's a matter of having the center of mass below the center of lift, because you want it to head in this direction, right? So I've actually had to shift the engines down a bit, and we are assuming that a whole lot of the equipment is right by the heat shield at the bottom. So. That's a little trick. That you can't really have a whole lot of stuff at the top of this. It basically has to be empty space for it to work like a pod. But the pod, uh, well, I mean, it depends on whether you think that landing gear would be heavier or whether the parachutes would be heavier at that point. I'm figuring parachutes would be a better deal and try and have it parachute onto the ground. Depends on how you feel about the tiles. I guess that's not the best deal. Probably I should just fit landing gear in and put, uh, bite the bullet on having a vertical stabilizer. So we'll have to put landing gear and a vertical stabilizer to do it space plane style. The problem with doing a space plane style is it so does not glide. <laughs> this is a tiny bit of uh, wing space and a whole lot of mass. Okay, fairing separation. Ooh, that's a little bit tight. Oof! It did not do that before. Hmm. Okay, I'll probably have to release the fairings a little bit higher up. Oh, let me try it again. Okay, I'll expedite this launch. And ignition. And launch. Okay, getting ready for booster separation. And booster set. Okay, they are clear. So, actually Skylab has its own fairings, and we could have just used an interstage to cover up the tail end of it and use the Skylab fairings. But I wanted to test this out with these full fairings. They're 14 tons combined, so they're really heavy, and we would really like to get rid of them as soon as possible. But given what happened last time, I'm gonna just carry them out into space first, and then we'll dump them. Okay, we are firmly in space. Let's try the fairings again. Okay, I think I should put them horizontally. I think on previous occasions I put them horizontally, but somehow they ended up vertical. Um, yeah, that's not a good thing because we're, we have to sort of hold a extra pitch above prograde, so the top one will tend towards the external tank. Now on the real iteration, uh, real I guess is maybe a too strong a word in this case, but of course this was a proposal uh, for how to bring the engines back on a, on a shell derived launch vehicle, but on that proposal they did have the OMS pods and they did not integrate uh, the forward OMS block that the shuttle has. This has the opposite, it has the OMS block, uh, the Ford RCS block, but not the OMS pods, because the OMS block uh, pods are really heavy. Those are really heavy, so I thought it would be a pretty bad deal to try and carry those with us. In this case, the Ford RCS is used to deorbit it. That takes a while, but it's doable. Now, as far as why I couldn't have made it more of a pod shape, that was mainly an aerodynamic decision. Um, you know, why I couldn't make it look like an Apollo command module or a Dragon capsule. It's just doesn't fit aerodynamically on the side of the external tank very well. Why does it need uh, the wing surfaces? That's to extend the center of lift f far enough back because the center of mass is pretty far back with the engines over here. 
so not a whole lot of options as far as that's concerned. Okay, uh, we could have done a little bit more. We've got 97 meters per second left. This isn't a great orbit for Skylab, but it's an orbit. Let's uh, get Skylab off and see how much mass it had. Okay, so it's off. And it's 81.7 tons right now. And it has no control because I forgot the little controller that's supposed to be on it. Uh, but 81.7 tons. The external tank with all modifications we'll see next. Okay. And uh, this guy, oh, it doesn't give us a tonnage reading. Well, you can subtract it out from this little guy, which is 28 tons. I guess that makes the external tank maybe 34 tons? Something around there. And that's with the adapter at the top, of course. All right, well, we might as well... Well, we could wait a little bit before deorbiting. I want to come down on in the daylight side, so let's do the deorbit burn later. It's only on internal battery, remember no fuel cells. Pretty much has to come back down immediately. It uses about half of its fuel in order to deorbit. Not perfectly balanced right now, I notice. It's using some pitch authority. Should note the body flap is of course from the Space Shuttle System mod by DECQ and these are just procedural control surfaces. And of course the parachutes from real chutes. Okay well that's pretty typical as far as periapses go for a shuttle return. Because they get lift you have to aim lower. In fact a real shuttle would probably have a negative periapsis. But usually I am a little bit kinder to my shuttles. And now again, this is a pod. So we have to remember that it is not, it is not configured as a shuttle right now. It wouldn't have yaw authority among other things. So we're bringing it in as a pod. Its center mass and center lift might not be directly in line with each other, in which case it'll act like it has a descent mode on, basically. Okay, well, we're at 100 kilometers. We're using some pitch authority. Apparently to uh, push down, so it wants to nose back a bit, which is interesting. But not technically a problem. Well, I mean, it does expose the engines a bit, but I did up their max heat tolerance a little bit to something a little bit more reasonable than 500 Kelvin. We'll see. I don't mind the use of the RCS right now. The RCS thrusters are only configured for one kilonewton. I think the shuttles were configured, configured for two, but I didn't want to use too much of the fuel at any given time. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I wouldn't mind it using more of the fuel quickly. Uh, we're still safe on pitch authority, but it's getting marginally worse. My normal mental happy state is when the speed is less than a tenth of the altitude. There's no rhyme or reason to that, but any time when that's not true makes me feel somewhat unhappy, and right now we're tracking along with that, basically. In theory, I should just be able to turn Smart ASS off, but there's no way its pitch authority is actually... Well, those little guys are doing something. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the body flap is doing in comparison, though. Hmm. Oh, oh, that's not good. Oh, uh, here, just tur turn off. I want to see what its normal state is. It looks like I heat shielded the engines a little bit too well. It was doing so well too, but obviously just a little bit difference in the center of mass and center of lift would help here. We 
maxed out on the pitch authority and that ruined things. I was trying to pitch it down, so which way around would that be? I guess that means that the center mass was behind the center of lift uh, this way, which, you know, with the engines in the back, does it's not a huge surprise. Um, so we'll have to move that a bit further forward. Uh, right now, the I set the engines to 1,500 Kelvin max operational and skin max temp 2,000. I should uh, definitely paint the back of this black and pretend they're HRSI tiles. Or, I, th I think it is black already and it just looks white in the heat. No, I think, I think I made a mistake in painting it. Or, I'm not sure actually right now. <laughs> is it white or is it black? Oh, it's black. It was just glowing white. So, okay, well, it's, it's heat protected. <laughs> Hmm, okay, that, that could do with some work. That could do with some work. We're also obviously not over land, which means if we got a splash down, we need our, like, protective system. We're not that far from land, though. Didn't do too bad an estimate on that. We could just adjust the retro burn time a little bit better, and we would have made it. Let's see what the parachutes actually managed to do. But in short, this was an idea. Um, it was not my idea, it's an idea others have had, but I've modified it a little bit to my liking to get rid of extra mass. And it sure makes for a decent lifter at the end of the day. Could you change this up a little bit and uh, so that I can fit four engines and put it on the side of an SLS? I don't see why not. Um, in fact, SLS, the main tank, should be more structurally sound for that sort of thing. It's a lot heavier than the Space Shuttle external tank. With this descending, let's see what uh, velocity it gets down to once it fully deploys the parachutes. I, again, I haven't gotten to this point yet. So I don't know if we've got... Uh, oh, that's great. I mean, seven? That was more than I thought I would get out of it. Okay. And we still got some fuel left. I could dump some fuel, but we have to figure out where the center of mass really needs to be. So I've got some tweaking to do, but anyway, I hope you enjoy this. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.